So hello again everyone, I'm Jim Harm and I'd like to welcome you back to my saltwater aquarium and of course coral reef aquarium. Uh, today I have some uh, difficult news, uh, personal news where I've had a major loss. In uh, uh, just a week or two ago um, I lost a number of my fish and started with the queen angelfish I had collected in the Florida Keys back in May. Uh, that queen had did, uh, it did okay uh, through my quarantine period and then actually survived the, over a good month or more. Now here we are in August. So he, he survived almost all the way up to the end of July uh, before I lost him. But uh, what had occurred was um, he did not have ick, white spot, or any of the typical diseases uh, that uh, I quarantined for. And if you hadn't watched my quarantine video, uh, you may not know, I use a combination of methods in, in order to do a rapid quarantine, which is um, turned out in this case not to be enough. Uh, some may consider it foolishness, but I'm going to talk a little bit about why it didn't work and what I need to do in the future. But so let me get back to wh what I've lost. I've lost my queen angelfish. And I've determined it, the loss was from uh, a parasite, but not a protozoan, but a metazoan. That is not a single cell parasite or bacterium or virus, but rather um, a multi multi-cell parasite. Uh, like a lice or a fluke or a worm, uh, but in this case, it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, a very large external parasite. I believe the metazoan was just a multi-cell external parasite that uh, that uh, actually uh, caused the death of the queen angelfish, and then uh, my other fish started to, to get it. And that was one of the reasons why I knew and was able to identify it is because of the the slow um, rather than rapid contagion it was a slow uh, movement because these par unlike protozoan parasites um, like like we're typically used to with salt water ick uh, that does a full cycle within a week to 10 days or so the metazoans usually take two or three weeks to, to cycle about and so, uh, after the queen angelfish died, then uh, I had already started to notice uh, uh, problems with the rock beauty, which is <laughs> a kind of terrifying and a shame because the, my tank before the introduction of the queen angelfish was uh, spotless, uh, absolutely uh, no disease. Uh, I went through when I did my uh, video on my saltwater aquarium overall, um, each of my fish and how long I've had them and, and I've had uh, the rock beauty for oh, probably quite uh, about four years now and very strong and hardy fish uh, but uh, eventually the rock beauty succumbed to the parasite and uh, also the ways and means of his death uh, helped me identify the, the cause as well uh, having been several weeks later, which has just been uh, recently, actually, just a, 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 about two weeks ago. Um, and then uh, to top it off, then uh, another fish, uh, the wrasse, uh, which I've collected in the Florida Keys some years ago, um, which is also going back uh, maybe four, four years or so. I've had the wrasse uh, in the aquarium. And and it's a blue-headed wrasse, but never did have the, the blue head coloration or the juvenile ye yellow coloration either. But that's a, nevertheless, uh, he he's eventually succumbed in just this past week. Uh, he succumbed to the parasite. And so I still have a few fish remaining. But you can see now, looking at my aquarium, it is, it's bare. I, I, I'm down to the Royal Grama, which has been removed and put into a quarantine tank. And... He definitely has the disease, and uh, although I've started him on treatment, and you may be asking, why didn't I treat the other fish? Well, that's part of the issue I got to go through and talk to you about. Uh, but overall, I want to say this: the topic of this video is coping with loss. 
uh, because this is a this is a topic. If you are in the hobby for any length of time, eventually you're gonna you're gonna cope with uh, some loss, loss of fish or loss of corals, or loss of everything. And I've seen a lot of videos over the years uh, uh, dealing with this issue. And quite often, some of our favorite uh, personalities and YouTubers uh, all of a sudden will post a video. I'm done. And there's no need for that kind of uh, drastic measure. And just, you know, if you, if everything doesn't work out, this is one of the things that the way my, the way I am, I am a saltwater fish hobbyist. I'm a reef hobbyist. I've been that way since uh, I, I started in the 1980s. Uh, my older brothers had started in the 70s. And there's a video about that, my history. But I'm always going to be a hobbyist. And I may have times I get in, I get out, but at this point, I'm telling you, I'm not getting out, but I do have to cope with the loss. I have to deal with it. And in a, in a previous video, I had also discussed the fact that at one point, I was going to come back and talk to you about some of my other losses. Uh, and it's hard to talk about failures, but I've had them in the past, and I was going to tell you about some of them. And, and now I'm actually telling you about an actual loss that I'm currently experiencing right now. And so it's a, it's a difficult, uh, for sure, difficult topic. Um, but one I, I think is kind of good that uh, you're getting to hear because I want you to know that, uh, you know, you can get through a loss, come out the other side and, and do a reset or whatever it is and, and uh, continue with the hobby. Um, because it is actually, in my sense, I think it's, it's part of the hobby. You can reduce the risk and maybe not have to actually ever have to experience it. But uh, I think for most of it, at some point or other, uh, some loss is part of the hobby. And that's okay. You know, you just deal with it. Uh, it's hard when you lose a pet. Uh, you know, some people may not consider fish pets until you own them. And you may not even, I mean, I don't name my fish, but some people do. And then you lose them and then you have an emotional uh uh, trauma <laughs> attached to it and I used to every time I lost a fish uh, I, I got a little emotional about it and I think now I'm, I'm getting uh, a little harder I don't know uh, and, I, and I believe it has to do with the fact that uh, um, I don't have as much ability to deal with uh, the everyday maintenance of my aquarium so when I have a loss, I just I just accept it because I, I'm not able to be here to care for them all the time. And that's part of what I wanted to talk to you about. Um, uh, over the past, uh, and it's not a justification, but I, I did want to tell you a little bit about the details. So from the time uh, the summer started in June or so, um, I've been on constant travel. I mean, that's what I do. I mean, that's how my profession uh, takes me all over the United States. And uh, I think I may have been in, I live in Florida, but I think I happened to be in Nevada at the time my angelfish passed away. And, um, and, and, I'm, and I'm talking about travel where I'm not getting home for the weekends uh, per se, where I'm, I'm getting home like maybe midnight, Friday night, I have Saturday, I pack up, and I'm flying again on Sunday. So a Saturday is not a day where I, you know, it's a, it's a day of rest. It's a day of doing things that need to be done. It, if, if you have too many of these weeks, you don't have a lot of time to maintain the aquarium. So overall, I didn't have any uh, problems. Uh, well, I, I had problems with the reef, I, I got to say, at uh because uh, the aquarium for about three weeks or more was not being maintained. It was only this past week, and they we're talking about most of July, I really didn't give it uh, any of the typical uh, supplements or no pox or maintenance or cleaning of the, of the uh, skimmer. All that stuff kind of went by the wayside. wasn't able to change out filter media. Um it's it's been a kind of a, a disaster but strangely enough most of the corals are healthy i'm having some that are struggling but during all this um besides having uh nuisance problems uh, with the you know with the algal uh, nuisance problems um, i had uh, fish loss with the parasite 
and are now down to um, the Royal Grama in, in quarantine, finally got him in a separate tank. And, and that's what I was saying where I wasn't able, wasn't home to get the angelfish out and quarantined. I just, I, I probably could have done it one Saturday uh, if I was amb ambitious and I was trying to get everything done and, you know, in between flights in a sense, I could have pulled the fish out, but gosh, it would have been a little bit, uh, pulling them out is one thing, you know, it's very difficult to collect the fish out of a reef aquarium. It's uh, not easy. And so I, I, uh, I'm at the point now where I think the best thing would be to remove all fish and probably the easiest thing now wait hold on i'm going to say something that's just going to shock you but i think probably the easiest thing is to do what they used to do in the uh in the old days when cattle got foot and mouth disease is they would uh quarantine a farm and destroy all the animals <laughs> and i i say that but I'm, right now my plan is not to do that but it, it it was a thought i mean one thing to do is pull all the fish out and anything that's still alive destroy it um, but, uh, I decided not to do it. In fact, uh, I would like to have pulled all the fish out, but I don't know what to do with all the fish at the time because I'm still on travel. In fact, even now, as I'm speaking to you, I'm dubbing this audio over the video, which was taken at home, but the audio, um, is, I'm in the hotel room right now, uh, doing the audio. And so, uh, you know, it's one thing to pull all the fish out, but I got to be home to care for them. So I decided to leave three fish in the aquarium uh the royal gram of course i've taken out put in the 10 gallon and and is in quarantine uh the three fish that remained are at the moment not showing any signs of the parasite uh but like i said this is a slow uh progression with the parasite if if it does attack it could be two or three weeks before you see the next fish go and another two or three weeks before the another one so I just, I'm just kind of waiting now until I have another breathing period where I'm home long enough to, to see what's going on. So I still got a, a lawnmower blenny doing great. I still got the big guy squirrel fish I'm concerned about, but there's no sign at all that he's got a problem. And, and the, the, of course, the big guy, uh, I've only had, I don't even think I've had him a year yet. He's a new fish, but he, he's a, you know, I would hate to lose him. He's been fine. And then um, I got the, besides the lawnmower blenny and the big eye, you can see here in the aquarium, I still have the cardinal fish. So the cardinal fish, it's been in this tank for, oh gosh, since the beginning of time. In other words, since the beginning of my re-entry into the saltwater fish keeping hobby. Uh, when, my, when my kids were little, uh, and you know, I, one of the, I don't know if I ever talked about it, but one of the, one of the fish losses I had was, uh, when I was, uh, when my, fi when my kids were toddlers, I had a 30 gallon saltwater fish tank. At that time, I wasn't doing any coral keeping. I had done coral keeping in the eighties, uh, uh, but we didn't have the, really have the technology back then. But nevertheless, I had, did have a 30 gallon fish tank, a saltwater aquarium, and, um, it bursted. Uh, one day I was at work and my wife called me up and said, hey, you're just your tank bursted from the seam and water is all over the floor. And so uh, at that point, um, I came home, cleaned that up, and I pretty much stayed out of the hobby uh, for a number of years. It, it was just because I wasn't uh, able to, um, you know, I, I was coming home every night and, and, wor and working with the young kids and not, uh, not taking care of fish tanks. That's all that was. It, 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 I always knew I'd be back in the hobby, and it was only, oh, probably, you know, from the early 90s when I got out to somewhere into the mid-90s, so it may have been maybe a, a five or six years I was out, and I decided when I got back in, I don't even think it was that long, because I got back in by not getting back into salt water, but I got back in by getting some cichlids and, and went into fresh water. Um, and then eventually I waited until, uh, you know, 2003, probably 2004 when I converted my fresh water back over to salt water. And at that time I got this cardinal fish and he's been in the tank. So since what, 2004, since the beginning, that's what I mean, since the beginning of time, since the beginning of my re-entry into the saltwater hobby. 
So that's the truth of what's going on. I want everybody to know. Um, but uh, the, one of the things I wanted to talk about is the disease itself. I pretty much had never discussed diseases in my uh, videos other than the quarantine method I've used because I don't really have any interest in the different diseases. A lot of there's a big topic in the forums. It's a major topic because everybody experiences it. But if you don't really have to, if if you do some quarantine and you're diligent with the quarantine uh, before you put your fish in your tank in your main display, uh, then hopefully you'll never have to worry about making identifications of disease and worrying about treatment. And so all the discussions about identifying diseases and how to treat it and what treatments are available and buying the treatments to me or it don't really don't need to be a practical part of the everyday hobby um but here i am i'm facing it now so i wanted to talk a little bit about yeah what what i have done because uh i gotta tell you over the years uh i've not only purchased dozens if not over 100 or more fish uh, i've collected more than that i've uh, since the early 1980s i've collected does well not dozens but probably hundreds of uh, of tropical of, of fish uh saltwater fish and so if i've had a lot of experience with loss a lot of experience with disease a lot of experience with the uh, different things and i can tell you the diseases that i typically find um when i'm collecting are, are different from what happens when you purchase a saltwater fish so the quarantine method i was using um is the is, to me is very effective and you can watch my video on it that i put out several years ago uh, about the one week quarantine it's very effective uh extremely effective in my mind when i've never had a sign of 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 ick so it's extremely effective for white spot ick or whatever you want to call it it's not it, it would not be the the method for marine velvet uh, but marine velvet is, you know, if you're getting clownfish, you may want to quarantine differently. Uh, but uh, for most fish, this is going to be, uh, is going to work. Uh, it, it's it's very effective for, for purchasing uh, tropical fish, especially those that uh, are susceptible, like tangs, to the, to the ick. Um, now, what happened here was this method is uh, when you when you're collecting fish, you have a different set of problems. Uh, I, like I said, over the years of collecting uh, well over hundreds of um, angelfish and wrasses and blennies and every kind of saltwater fish, uh, normally ick is is not something you ever come across. You, you don't. So ick is, uh, like I said, is a protozoan uh, you know, uh, disease where it's very rapid. And so... Um, out on a reef, it happens, of course, but, you know, uh, the multiplication uh, happening out on the reef still means that it is going to be, uh, is only going to be occasionally on, not overwhelm any fi any one fish at any point, because you have the o the whole ocean out there uh, taking care of the, the masses amount of reproduction of ick you still have an enormous ocean and so the fish don't really readily when you collect fish you don't normally see ick the trouble is if you're collecting fish all over the world and bringing them in to not the ocean but into distribution areas uh, into contained areas um, those will eventually uh, get ick and it's going to be it's going to go rampant within the um it's in these distribution points, and I find that you can just pretty much assume, even if your fish looks well and good at the local fish store, that they're coming from places that are all of these for the last weeks or months that the fish has been in captivity, it's been exposed at some point or another and has a high probability to having ick. And, and, and if it does, even if it's not, you know, too terrible on the particular fish once that goes through the cycle it's going to multiply and be highly contagious and, and multiply with a vengeance 
at high numbers in in the small container of an aquarium. This is not the this is a whole different issue than collecting fish right out of the ocean. Now, what I find uh, uh, collecting fish out of the ocean is, uh, and I'm kind of this is a guesstimate, and this is a guesstimate from experience of collecting hundreds of fish. Uh, maybe more than that, even maybe, uh, but uh, definitely collecting hundreds of fish. Um, that I would find about uh, one out of five fish has a parasite, and so uh, the two main problems with the fish out of the ocean would be odinium. Now, odinium. Some people think odinium is ick. It's not. It's a it's too severe of a, a disease for usually I would, wouldn't expect to find it in the local fish store because it's very fast. Odidium causes a, attacks the the gills and causes the fish to lose its uh, its ability to respirate, and uh, and then and the fish will not getting enough oxygen will start to behave like it does with ammonia poisoning and and begin to swim around and and like a uh, like it's uh psychotic and maybe even do loop-de-loops and circles in the aquarium and so if you've never experienced that i don't imagine many uh, uh a lot of aquarius would experience odidium because it is very vengeful and, and once it's there it's just going to kill everything pretty quick uh and I, it's very difficult to treat and um, but that's one of the diseases I find that you have to be careful about uh, when you collect. But the thing with odinium is uh, I knew that my angelfish, the queen angelfish, didn't have that because it, it never experienced that. And if it was going to experience that, you usually see that immediately within a day or two. I mean, it is that fast. Uh, so the other thing that you would have is you have fish lice. Uh, fish lice is a uh, larger parasites and flukes and worms and things. And although I didn't see any external, uh, large external parasites, uh, there is those metazoan ones that are transparent, even though they're external and multicellular, um, and which is the case that I believe that uh, what I have now in my aquarium, um, or at least uh, unless I eradicated it by taking all the fish that did have it. Uh, well, we'll wait to see. Uh, but uh, those that's another issue that um, uh, there's definitely a possibility to get into the aquarium trade because it is slow. Uh, but it's also one of the other ones that I got to be careful about when collecting uh, uh, live uh, right off the reef. Uh, because every so often, you know, maybe one out of five, a twenty percent chance you're gonna have a parasite or odinium. So that means my strategy for quarantine is a little different now, and, and it means that um, uh, that all uh, collected fish that I that are um, not only would go in quarantine probably a little longer than what I knew normally would do. But all collected fish must have a, a complete freshwater bath. Uh, freshwater bath is actually very effective for external parasites. Uh, but and I'm surprised because I usually do freshwater baths on when I'm quarantining my fish, but I don't recall ever doing a freshwater bath on the queen angel fish I collected. So I'm having a change my strategy so next year when i'm out collecting again um i think once uh, the very first day uh when i pull them out of collecting bucket and put them in a, any kind of quarantine i get a, the first thing that's going to happen as soon as i as soon as possible as soon as i get off the boat give them a fresh water bath and and then uh, keep an eye on them and quarantine them with a different methodology than i'm i'm using for 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 ick so uh, that's the story. It's a shame that I'm telling you this, but I've had losses over the years. I've, I've had other times where I've used my quarantine method. I had a full, beautiful main display of completely beautiful, uh, I mean, completely disease-free fishes. And then from a lax moment of purchasing a fish, allowed it to come in the tank, and I had to remove every fish. This happened, I don't know. 
probably early on seven or eight years ago and I had to remove every fish uh, out of the reef. That, that usually means pulling your reef apart to get all the fish out, but it had to be done. Quarantine all the fish, uh, got them all back to being disease free. He was able to save most of them uh, through quarantine. Through the ick is actually uh, treatable uh, if you catch it soon enough and all that, and uh, and get them back in and been able to enjoy disease free tank for for many years now until I got this parasite. So uh, we all have our, our our difficult times and. And I wanted to report what's going on here and how it all came about. But I, boy, I rattled on. I can't believe I, I rattled on as long as I did. Uh, but I uh, uh, wanted to tell you what's going on. And, of course, it's also, it's it's not going to put me at a hobby. It's going to be a time of reset. It's going to be time of cautious watching now. Uh, but I'm looking forward to... Um, Starting, I'm not going to be starting completely fresh. Uh, I'm not going to be uh, pulling my aquarium apart or anything like that. But I will be, it gives me the opportunity to, to make some adjustments in the kind of community uh, I'm going to have, the fish I want to have in the aquarium, um, and uh, make some adjustments and get some different type of fish in there. Still plan on having Atlantic fish only for now. Uh, but... Uh, Always have to take a negative and turn it into a positive. And a positive is I'm really a kind of looking forward to getting some new fish in. But we're looking at several months down the road and taking it slow. But uh, in the meantime, I got to get my water quality back up. And I'm still traveling like crazy. So it's difficult. I, I did a I did a, a water change this past weekend. I'm, I'm back out on the road again. But... I was able to get some time in to pull a lot of the, get some of the fish out and pull a lot of the, some of the water out, do some water change and clean out the filters and do some of that and get, and, and but I'm um, still got a lot of weeks ahead of me where I'm not going to have the time to, to uh, maintain a tank. But that's part of the reason why I keep the kind of corals I do and the kind of fish that I do, uh, cause I understand that, uh, I, I, you know, to cultivate the aquapores and some of the more difficult stuff, uh, you have to be there. You have to be there to maintain. And, uh, but doesn't mean if you're, if you're not there all the time that you can't have some level of enjoyment and some sort of reef. And I really love the reef I have, even though I have a lot of softies. Um, and I really do enjoy uh, the, the fish most of all. So uh, thanks for listening, and uh, it's hard to get on and tell the truth about what's going on sometimes, And but I want you to know that uh, uh, for me, uh, coping with the loss is part of the hobby, and, uh, and when it comes time that some of you may experience some loss, I want to encourage you to, to you know, take it in stride, and you don't have to jump out and uh, kind of rein in the emotions and, and get through it, and and, and get back to enjoying uh, the hobby. So thanks for listening, and I'll catch you next time.